New trailers dropped for Gladiator 2, Ballerina, The Thunderbolts, Sinners, and The Last of Us Season 2. A Bane and Deathstroke movie is in the works. Catherine Bigelow has cast her latest film. And a Robocop TV series is in the works at Amazon. Let's get into this week's movie news. What's up, movie friends? Welcome back to Raiders of the Lost Podcast, the ultimate film and TV podcast. There is so much to talk about in this week's episode of Movie News, the weekly episode where we go through all of the news stories, trailers, and announcements in the film and TV world so you don't have to. So sit back, relax, and listen to us talk about what's going on. James, take it away with the box office. We're going to talk about The Wild Robot first, which yes. had a huge opening weekend. It was projected to be $25 million, but then... It destroyed expectations and is grossing $35 million in its opening weekend. It's 90% critic score on Rotten Tomatoes right now. This is the latest film from DreamWorks. We got to see it a few days ago, and it is absolutely exceptional. I expect this to be a huge hit, and it's arguably already considered one of DreamWorks' best films to date. I think that the tr the tr projections were so low. It's $25 million. It's because Transformers didn't do that well its opening weekend, so they, they tempered the expectations, but also so many projections are based on social media interactions. This is a movie for little kids and families, so a huge portion of the audience aren't using social media. So I think that also addresses the low projections and why it ended up being a huge hit for the studio, making way more than they were expecting. And I loved it. I think anybody who sees this will have a great time. It's funny. It's emotional. It's a wonderful animated film and is absolutely the front runner for the best animated picture Oscar. It's, it's interesting because some animated films are killing, obviously, mm -hmm. Super Mario Bros. And the thing with The Wild Robot is it's really a big callback in a lot of ways to old classic animated films, old Disney features. And Chris Sanders, we got to see him do a Q&A, talked about how Bambi is one of his all-time favorite movies, got him into animation. And this movie is sort of a contemporary version of that kind of story in a lot of ways. And you know, I, I think this movie is really special in the animated features going forward, and it's groundbreaking, and I, I can't wait for everyone to check it out. It's already getting so many great reviews all over the place. Next up, Beetlejuice is still hanging on strong, pulled in another $15 million at the domestic box office. Barely dropped. Barely. I yeah. mean, it's, it's over, wow. I think it's over $300 million right now. Transformers 1, however, has not had a great release. In its second weekend, it only pulled $10 million at the domestic box office. That's a 59% drop. Transformers 1, I think it's only at $40 million gross domestically. Yeah, yeah. And it's doing okay in the international market, but it's clearly not what the Transformers franchise IP is used to. I think it was a weird time to release the film. There's a lot of competition. The Wild Robot was obviously way more anticipated as it made more than Transformers a well-known brand name. So we'll see going forward. It doesn't look like it's going to be a big hit going for the studio, which would put a franchise in jeopardy for it. Yeah, honestly, I really like Transformers 1. Yeah, it was a good time. I, I'm actually wearing a hoodie that Paramount said this. It's a, <laughs> really comfortable. But yeah, it was good. I, yeah. I like Transformers 1. We hosted a private screening of it thanks to Paramount. But, you know, it's not doing that great at the box office because it's probably, what, $100 million budget on something like this? Yeah, it was worth a shot to try animated, though. Like, yeah. why not? I think Give it's it a pretty shot. cool. Yeah. I think it was a good time. Next up, we have an Indian cinema action drama in fourth place at the domestic box office in North America. Devara Part 1 grossed $6.5 million, beating out the opening weekend of Megalopolis, which we all knew was going to be a huge flop, somewhere around $4 million this opening opening weekend for the Francis Ford Coppola self-funded film distributed by Lionsgate, $120 million budget. And goodness, Lionsgate is having a bad year. It just continues. Well, Lionsgate, to put some context, is not in the hole at all for this film. They didn't invest any money. They're just sharing receipts, basically box office receipts with Coppola. So even though they're not going to make much money, they actually didn't put too much into releasing this film and distributing it. Another so, so it's not a huge... like loss for them yeah well i guess good for them i think they were just like if fuck it let's see let's try let's see if we can make money on this it's frank yeah <laughs> it's in <laughs> we did a review of megalopolis in our letterbox recap on thursday it certainly is a movie it's it's a it's certainly in theaters <laughs> so isn't speak no evil still cooking this James McAvoy still speaking. low budget horror grossed $3 million in its fourth weekend, I believe, at the domestic box office. On a $12 million budget, it is now up to $45 million at the global box office, tripling its budget. It's a huge hit for Blumhouse. 
Awesome film. One of my favorite of the year so good far. Good time. It's a good time movie. It's uh, Shut your brain off. A good time movie. It's a good, I, had, I, had a, I had a great time. We were laughing our asses <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, it was great. It was a good time. And it, it, this is the traditional, like Blumhouse hasn't had that big uh, return on investment hit yet this year. I guess, this, yeah. This is what, it had a couple of bombs this so year. so many in the last two yeah. years. It had a, a bunch of duds this year. So this was like probably their best return on investment so far for 2024. Probably. Next up, we have The Substance pulled another $2 million at the domestic box office. Saturday night opened, excuse me, I have a huge sneeze coming. Oh, it's come. Uh, I sucked it in. <laughs> you came almost to sneezing. <laughs> came almost to sneezing. Saturday night opened to five theaters, very limited release, $255,000 total. The second best average on a limited release this year. That's fifty five thousand per theater. Theater behind only Kinds of Kindness, which had an insane seventy five thousand dollar per theater average. So it will begin releasing. I'm guessing around thirty theaters next week, and then a wider, probably closer to a thousand the next the week after. And then we have My Old Ass, which had a limited run at the box office, and it pulled in six hundred thousand dollars in the first two weeks of its limited release it's opening wide projections right now i couldn't find a yeah i can't find data. it yeah it's probably not gonna be very big yeah. that's probably why but it will go to amazon right after because it's an amazon mgm movie oh yeah My and old actually ass. produced and funded by margot robbie was it really yeah huh. she she was uh made it with her production company i keep hearing that it's a, a lovely coming of age film. yeah it looks like a lovely coming of age film for, for women yeah i agree <laughs> yes, i heard the same thing <laughs> <laughs> who told you margot Yes, she Just told smart. me. She texted me, "Hey, it's a lovely coming of age drama. You'll love it." <laughs> now, there's still there's so many trailers that I can't wait to talk about. We had so many big releases this week. All on the good internet. trailers. Yeah, all all really really good. <laughs> Usually, it's like a hit or miss or just a bunch of duds, but they're all greats. But first, we got to plug our Todd Phillips interview we did. It dropped on Friday or on Thursday on YouTube. Go check it out. We were very lucky and fortunate enough to be invited by Warner Brothers to attend an early screening for Joker Folly Ado and then interview Todd Phillips for about 10 minutes the 10 minutes the following day. It was an awesome time talking to him. It's on the front of our homepage on YouTube. Go check it out. And he was just a delight to have conversation with. He was wonderful. He was, he's a great cool guy. guy. Yeah, he, yeah, we're all best friends now. We, have a, we have a text yeah. thread. <laughs> the boys. <laughs> we also got uh, like berated for saying a do-rog. <laughs> A do? <laughs> oh, some by an French English guy. guy. Oh, yeah, an English guy. <laughs> Americans don't say it right. He's like, how do you say? <laughs> he's like, you know how to pronounce the tell, right? I'm like, Joker, Folly, a do. And, uh, and then it turned into 10 minutes of how Americans are dumb. <laughs> it's like, bro, I'm not French. <laughs> I'm American. I don't speak French. I've never seen this word before. Not that Americans don't speak French, but I'm American. I pronounce never a lot of words this, wrong. Never seen this word before. This is, I learned this phrase because of this movie. So yeah. get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. He was so, so fucking, smug. So snug. So snug. snug. Smug, snobby, yeah. snobby, yeah. Fucking a knob, a twat. <laughs> <laughs> Americans just never say anything correctly. Okay, bud. <laughs> he had the posh British ac yeah. accent too. He had holes in his shirt. We were, too. Be we were being very polite. <laughs> he had holes in his shirt. Watch him. Be you can't tell people how to speak properly with holes in your shirt. <laughs> anyway, Anthony <laughs> set off. There's so many cool trailers to talk about. Which one do you want to do first? Gladiator Two, obviously. Take it away. Gladiator Two dropped its full length trailer, and this is this slapped so the marketing department's going ham right now with new posters new character posters and this full trailer we saw a lot of action i feel like i mean if you're not excited for this you gotta be crazy like this is this looks like a blast if you're not excited about gladiator 2 get a life <laughs> get a life <laughs> it looks just exciting and it's gonna be fun to just go into theater and be immersed back into ancient rome uh paul mescal looks great we saw more dialogue with him we got to get a better sense for his performance, he's really impressing me with just the small screen time in the trailer. Like, I think he's going to be a fucking incredible lead. We got more Denzel. We get to the idea of Denzel's character is clearly pining for the throne of Emperor, as well as the conflict with Pedro Pascal and Paul Mescal's character, who clearly there's a big battle, and Pascal's general commanded it, which destroyed his, his uh, home. And killed the people he loved. So now he's out for revenge and wants to kill Pedro Pascal. Which looks like it brings a lot of great stakes and gravitas to that battle they have in that trailer. So I'm just, I'm sat for this. I can't wait. It looks amazing. The most important part though, we learned in this trailer. Oh obviously, yes. Spoiler. That Lucius is the son of Maximus. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh. I know we theorized it, but the first teaser was really great about not high, not showing anything like that. But I think that this is the path to go because they sort of left a back door in the first movie. When you talk about Lucius's father's not in the film, they talk, they have a brief conversation about who's his father, and we don't officially know. We never meet him, even though um, 
uh, uh, what's her name? Connie Nielsen's character talks about it. Him. It sort of was a backdoor for a sequel in a lot of ways. Like, how do we go forward? Lucius can be Maximus' son. And also it explains she and Maximus with that that conversations. That, there's that tension. There's sexual tension between them. Yeah, you know they had yeah. a, a relationship in yeah, the past. absolutely. Like, but they, man. they definitely used to, you know, get, get down and dirty together. Have some wine <laughs> and mingle. <laughs> they, yes, they used to mingle. So that explains uh, there is that sexual tension in Gladiator between the two characters. I, I love this trailer. So much yeah. action and the battles, the sequences, the rhinoceros. We got baboons. Uh, baboons. Like, gladiators fighting ba baboons. Ba baboons or baboons? Baboons. Ba baboon. Baboons? Baboon. I like to say baboon. Baboon? Baboon, baboon, baboon. <laughs> baboons. <laughs> So, <laughs> which is right? The boon doesn't sound right that to English me. That English journalist is listening right now. It's a bad boon. <laughs> Fucking Americans. Americans. They never say anything <laughs> right. It looks incredible. I can't wait. Uh, another trailer that I was so excited to see finally drop. The Last of Us season two dropped its first trailer, and we saw quite a bit. We saw. A a lot of great moments that anyone who's played Last of Us Part Two recognize. Subway, yeah, the, the red subway light. with the red light looks oh incredible. God. We have our first looks at Jeffrey Wright. We have our first look at Isabel Merced, and then Caitlin Deaver, obviously, as Abby, the character that's gonna have to get get, get a lot of fan hate for sure. So Caitlin Deaver's got quite the task of <laughs> repelling a lot of hatred. <laughs> you say it every time. It's gonna happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We all know. We yeah, all know. I know. We, we gotta know. bring it up. I'm trying <laughs> to keep, don't gotta bring I'm it up. I'm keeping people engaged. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Talk about the trailer. The trailer looks amazing. So many beats from the from the game as well as some things that, you know, they change things up here and there in the show. Yeah. And it opens with, obviously, Joel looks sort of to be in a therapy session in a lot of ways. With Catherine Harris' character, who yeah. I don't think is in the game, if I remember. I have a theory of who she might be, but I don't uh -huh. want to spoil it too much. And But we again, we got so many great glimpses of iconic moments from part two. Mm -hmm. And season one, I mean, season two will be... I believe that they said just half of part two of the game because I think they said they want to turn this into two Th or three, three, se three, three seasons. seasons. Yeah. And so I'm curious to see how they go about it because part one in the game, you're starting with Ellie for quite a bit in Joel. And we're staying, we're in, we're in their uh, refuge. They're in their city in Jackson. Boston. Jackson. Oh, ja oh Jackson. game two. Gotcha. Yeah, we're in gotcha. Wyoming. Um, so I can't wait to see the production design. We see Tommy in the trailer. We see some characters from the past seasons as well. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm so looking forward to all of the factions that are in this game. Obviously, WLF. And then we have the Seraphites. We got a glimpse of a Seraphite in this, in this trailer as well. So there's a and lot of things religious cooking. imagery. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the cultish religious imagery on walls and stuff and graffiti. So it seems like they're going to tease a lot of things throughout the full three seasons in the first season, whereas the game you kind of just reach these different destinations and get little glimpses of the glimpses of inclusive of things eventually. But I feel like they they have to get all these pieces in early. There's something that they didn't show. Maybe they're saving. Maybe they're waiting until the third season, the aquarium. Yeah, maybe. I didn't see any aquarium. I don't know if you did. I didn't see the aquarium, and also I didn't see many of the characters from WLF. So it might those might be threads. Well, we saw, I mean, Jeffrey Wright, we can assume we'll see them eventually. And it seems like maybe they're saving the aquarium for the third season with those characters and, and Abby's storyline. Well, aquarium kind of starts, I would say, mid midway season two. Yeah. It's like halfway through the game. Mm -hmm. so, so the aquarium will be big. I, I'm, ex I'm looking forward to seeing that production design as well as... WLF, WLF, they take over a football stadium in the game. Yeah. That, I'm really excited to see how they sick. do that, if they do actually oh, do yeah, it at, I forgot at a football about that. stadium. And also, Abby's big opening sequences in this trailer. Oh, it's yeah, the be, fence yeah, with the good, infected. That was her. That's her first bit in the game. That's, oh, my that, goodness. That fence shot, right? Uh, it, that's in part the of, yeah, yeah. It yeah. leads to that. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. You know, she leaves her group mm -hmm. gotcha. in yeah, the middle yeah, of the yeah, night, yeah. basically, yeah. It's going to be epic. It's going to be epic. We're going to see some... Also, well, guitar some, playing. Yeah, guitar play. Oh, my God. When I see Pedro Pascal play guitar and sing to Bella Ramsey in this first episode, <laughs> probably I'm going to I'm gonna cry. I know I will. <laughs> but I'm, what I'm looking forward to is seeing all the snow. Yeah. I, when was the last time you see a lot of, a lot of snow in like a movie or a show? I feel Never. Like it's been a I've while. Ne I've never seen snow It's in been a, a while. <laughs> like, I guess the holdovers, yeah. Yeah, the holdovers had snow in it. I love snow in last cinema. Last year. So last year. Yeah, and then the Batman will have a lot of snow in it. Oh yeah, we'll, we'll get our a... snow fix. Ooh, I can't wait to see us snow Bostonians. Yeah, yeah. We want we like seeing authentic snow, not fake snow. When we see fake snow, it pisses us off. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what else we got for trailers? Ballerina, the highly anticipated spinoff of John Wick, finally dropped their trailer, starring Anna de Armas as the lead, with Keanu Reeves making a fun 
appearance in this trailer. It looks like he's in one scene. Uh, Norman Reedus, Lance Reddick, Angelica Houston, Ian McShane, and Gabriel Byrne. Uh, it's great to see Lance Reddick back, obviously. Angelica Houston reprising her role as the leader of the ballerina outfit. And then Ian McShane, we see his character recruits. And Armistice's character when she's a little girl. Winston, looks like her fa- yeah. looks like her family was killed or some some way. So he's on opportunity taking a kid. Uh, I think it's just a really strong trailer for what they have cooking. Uh, and it's I didn't expect to see Keanu. Oh, I expected it. I, ex- I there's a shot of she's like watching him walk down the steps with Angelica Houston, and I was like, oh, was that a, just a b? Was that a different angle of that scene? And they basically, I was like, oh, did they put Anna in with with CGI on that shot? But then I was then they showed the other scene that Keanu's in. I was like, oh, he's he showed up for this movie. I mean, the title of the movie is officially called From the World of John Wick Ballerina. That's what it's called? That's the title according to Wikipedia and IMDb, and but Ballerina for short. So it's From the World of John Wick Ballerina. I'm not surprised that Keanu's in the trailer at all because they need to sell this movie. They know their TV series did not do very well, yeah, yeah, The yeah. Continental. No one really watched that show. No one's talking about it. There's a TV series? <laughs> Exactly, <laughs> and they need Ballerina to perform well to maintain the universe of John Wick, which they're just making lots of spinoffs of. Yeah. And it seems like it's, I can't remember exactly the time period the movie takes place, but isn't it between three and four John Wick? Because it's, yeah, it's, when, well, John, he's all, he's it's all, when he visits the Ballerina, Angelica Houston. Yeah, and he's all cut one. up, yeah. yeah. In Parabellum. Gotcha. So it's it's during Parabellum. Yeah. I will say there's a huge missed opportunity with the trailer, with the story, too. So John Wick, what sets him off? Is his dog being killed? And at Armis's character, her father was killed. So she's and she says the line, "They killed my father." They really missed the opportunity. They killed my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine cat she, lady. Got, she had a kitten that got killed. I mean, it set her off. I would go on a rampage if I had a kitten that got killed too. I would. That was. I'm sorry. That was just popped in my head when I saw the trailer. I was, I was like, that'd be really funny if they did it. It's cool to see Norman Reedus here. And he's probably going to play an assassin. It's a little mysterious who he is. Lance Reddick, probably the last thing he filmed before passing away. Obviously, Angelica Houston reprising role, Ian McShane. And then Gabriel Byrne yeah. as what looks like the main villain in this film, which is really cool. He's an actor that's always had a great presence, but he hasn't been in a ton of movies the last this century, really. I mean, the last big thing he really was in it was The Usual Suspects. He's had some stuff here and there, but that was the last... The biggest movie he's been in since then, really. I think this will be no, huge. No, he's been in a lot of movies after that. Yeah, but he not huge not in the 90s. No, but after Usual Suspects, like this century. He he just never broke out. That's what I mean. No, but he was in plenty of big movies. Yeah, but I think they just were I'm bombs. just saying it's cool to see him in this. I will say, think about this. Gabriel Byrne and E. McShane look a lot alike. Oh, they, have they do. They have very similar looks. They have very similar facial features. They're, especially in their older age, they both look a lot alike. I'm theorizing we might have a brother situation. Did Gabriel Byrne have an accent in the trailer? I'm trying to remember. I can't. I can't remember if he had an accent. Or That'd not. be pretty but interesting. They, Brothers. They look a lot alike, don't they? Yeah, they, they do. They look a ton alike. Unless I'm just theorizing. Wrinkly old white guys with a good tan <laughs> and dark hair. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's my. I'm guessing we got. We might have uh, relations here. I. Like- They're not having relations. <laughs> They're just related. No relations between brothers, but just they are related. <laughs> yeah, you know you're going I mean. way off the you deep end I mean. here. It's a good theory. I like that. Thank we you. got we got another great trailer. The highly anticipated film from Ryan Coogler, Sinners, starring Michael B. Jordan, Haley Steinfeld, and Delroy Lindo. This is a vampire film, period piece, set in uh, Louisiana, right? Yes. Stars Michael B. Jordan, who as the- twins who return to their hometown to find a great evil welcoming them back. And this looks so interesting, so intriguing. A really brilliant trailer because there's no reveal of any monster of any kind in this movie. Just a lot of great imagery, a lot of suspense built from this trailer, and a lot of mystery. And it looks fantastic. Yeah, they didn't give anything away. And it's just it's an interesting setting and, and a great tone. And uh, he shot it on IMAX cameras, which is really cool for a horror film. And we got one tease of what seems to be a vampire from behind uh, with the strange movement but that's all we got and then we got obviously a huge crowd outside it seems like uh, after the first act it's going to be a one location movie possibly and uh i'm guessing Haley steinfeld seems like a villain in the movie could be yeah she's a vampire she had this like slow walk like she was a like a vampire 
You know what I mean? And then we got Michael B. Jordan with a Tommy gun. <laughs> that was such a cool shot. But also, the posters, they use the color theme of red and blue. Mm -hmm. And it looks like the B Michael B. Jordan that we see a lot in the trailer, who wears a blue hat, and his, his the other one wears a red hat. It looks like the blue hat one is going to be the lead. And if you look at the poster, the red hat one has this evil smile. The poster. Yeah, the poster. <laughs> I'm guessing... Maybe the other twin turns bad, turns into a vampire. That would be interesting. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. It seems like it's going to be playing with, like, in a way, a Jackal and Hyde kind of personality difference. Oh, that's a good point. Because they look like, you know, they're tight in the opening, but he, the Red Hat brother goes away. Maybe he comes back as a monster. But they also have very different personalities, even <laughs> though they, they like yeah. are still, you know, buddies and still friends. But they do, one seems a little more eccentric or a little off kilter than the other one. Either way... Michael looks really big. He's, dude, <laughs> he looks, his arms are massive. I don't know what he's eating down there in Louisiana in, in 1910, he's, but fuck. Yeah, he's fucking huge. Holy shit, he's <laughs> hitting the gym down there, just benching trees. Like, <laughs> like fuck. He's benching trees. Just a he's massive. just been chopping down trees for, for two real, years. For real, yeah. He looks great. He I'm looks, sure that they'll explain why he's just such a jacked human being in I mean, 1920s you don't Louisiana. Have to. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to. He's just awesome. He's just massive. <laughs> he looks great. Looks pretty good. He, but he's obviously so talented. I can't wait to see this. Next up, we got the we finally got the trailer for Thunderbolts, uh, which is going to be a new Marvel Avengers esque team up with a bunch of fan favorites of like the B list of the of the Marvel universe. Yeah, I guess you not <laughs> nothing against them, but like it's they're not solo this movie people. This is an Avengers. This is like yes, yeah, the the B list guys and gals. You know what I mean? Yeah. And they all have it's finally like the have the expendable. Them. It's the Expendables kind of. It is the Expendables. <laughs> it's the Expendables of Marvel. Absolutely. Black Ops. B squads. Yeah, none of them are none of them are leads in their own movies, and now they've come together <laughs> to, to team up. That's, that's the Expendables. It's, they should call it the B team. <laughs> and it's a it's a fun trailer. It looks good. It looks like uh, the old school kind of Marvel that we loved in the 2010s and 2000s and 2010s, and it looks like no nonsense, just uh, laughs, action, uh, great like great actors, and uh, they're clearly. I mean, this is clearly Florence Pugh's show. It's, so I'm guessing Clearly the lead, yeah. Yeah, this is going to be Florence Pugh and Sebastian Stan's show, is my guess. They're the two biggest, uh, best actors in the cast. Uh, and Harbor looks hilarious, like great comic relief. Um, but it's interesting to see these other side characters all teaming up for something bigger. And then, uh, what's what's um his name from Top Gun Maverick? Lewis Pullman. Lewis Pullman. He looks to be some kind of I don't know anything about the comics. Obviously, he's playing Sentry. I don't know who that is, <laughs> but it seems like a Superman esque character. Uh, indestructible bullets bouncing off of him. I'm guessing there's a lot of great uh, mystery behind his character and why they put him in a room with him. Uh, and his name's Bob. He calls himself Bob, just like Top Gun. I think was that a reference to? It has to be a reference to Maverick. It, it was probably a reference to Maverick also, but I'm pretty it's sure that be. his name is Robert. Uh, let me just double check. Yeah, but even so, to call himself Bob, it's got to be a reference to Top Gun Maverick's call sign. I mean, you're probably it's right. It's gotta be. Robert Reynolds is the is Sentry's name. Yes, I, but I think like they were like, what if we call himself Bob? Like that would be perfect. I, I guarantee that was like, smart for the trailer. Yeah, because yeah, I guarantee if they had another actor, maybe they not would have even thought of that. It wouldn't even have come up. But it's, it's Lewis Pullman. I think it was a fun. It's a for me when I watched the trailer, I I, I loved that. Yeah, me too. He looks, seems to be bulletproof because he's got bullet holes all over his shirt, but he's not wounded. Um, and obviously, like Andy said, this is Yelena's movie. Clearly, she's going to be the lead. We also have Sentry. Like we said, Bucky Barnes is huge in this film. He looks like a wild card. Uh, Melina Vestokovov, played by Rachel Weisz, is going to come back. We have Taskmaster. Task Taskmaster is coming back. Who's not in this trailer? Um, no, they, there's a glimpse of, of Taskmaster. Oh, is it? When they're all inside that room uh, fighting each other. I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, gotcha. gotcha. They just, she just didn't say anything. Ghost is uh, is going to be in the show. Ghost. Red Guardian, obviously played by David Harbour, is going to be the massive comic relief in this movie. <laughs> Julia Louis, Julie, Julia Louis-Dreyfus is going to be our main villain, it looks like. Valentina Allegra de Fontaine, who we saw in past Marvel projects. And then we have Wyatt Russell playing John Walker, U.S. agent, coming back reprising that character as well. Looking at bad news stories about him. Fallen hero. Yeah. So it looks like they're all assigned some kind of mission that is criminal, and that's why Bucky's hunting them down. Yeah, and then, and then we Bucky have... will obviously join them. Mm -hmm. And Harrison Ford's going to be in this movie, obviously, as Thaddeus. Io Debris has an unspecified role in this as well. Daniel Brule will probably come back. Oh, this back. is the project she signed on yeah. for. Okay. Uh, Helmet Zemo. 
And then we have Lawrence Fishburne is going to be in this film as well as character Bill Foster. So the cast is absolutely insanely stacked. Louis Pullman, I think, after this movie is going to blow up because he has Salem's Lot coming out. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's going straight to streaming. I wish I, I could have seen that in theaters. A cool vampire movie in theaters, even if it's not perfect, would have been awesome. Mm-hmm. But he's the lead in that that's coming out very soon. And then being Sentries is going to be huge for him going forward because I'm sure Sentry is going to play a huge role in the MCU. Going forward. Yeah, he's... He seems like he's great in this, but yeah. seems like a cool dude. I mean, the trailer looks. But so Daniel Bruhl's in it too. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. The trailer looks pretty good. Yeah. It looks I think pretty fun. Yeah, I think it's just a uh, kind of a return to form. It seems like we'll see, but it seems like a return to form, and uh, the extensive reshoots clearly paid off. I think that they're smartly sticking to the tone and feel of Winter Soldier. They have. I think that's what the plan is for for right now. Mm-hmm. Just try to capture that. Yeah. It just give. I think this is, looks like they're giving fans what they want, yeah. which is what they need to do. All right, let's talk about a tragic passing in the film and TV world and theater. We have the passing of Dame Maggie Smith, who played so many iconic characters, such a long career, but obviously most famously playing Professor McGonagall, Minerva McGonagall, in the Harry Potter franchise, passed away at the age of 89. Even in her later years, she was still on top of the box office with Downton Abbey, you know? That's right, yeah. Even in her 80s, she was still, her movies were would come out as number one yeah and, and she's just a, a staple and a true legend in british cinema and british tv yeah there's a video at universal where outside wizarding world people were holding up wands outside in tribute to her yes the other day the day oh, she passed really away sweet. so it's just it's just a sad passing yeah just she, she was incredible we have some lanterns news obviously josh brolin passed up on this role kyle chandler has accepted the role of hal jordan for lanterns yeah i mean i don't know much about the lanterns but i mean kyle chandler is a great actor he's always been a very reliable actor it clearly was though like i've read that six other a-listers passed on the project before it went to him so i mean he's obviously not their first choice but he's a he's a solid guy he's a solid actor yeah he's he's good in pretty yeah. much everything he's in yeah exactly he's just always good you know and then he brings uh, that football coach energy you know yeah can like, you say that again exactly <laughs> like you said it before? <laughs> I call these fun coupons. Fun coupons. Fun coupons. <laughs> go fuck yourselves, you miserable fucks. <laughs> I'm going to go have them lift caviar off my balls. <laughs> <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street. <laughs> going to play a Bond villain. Might as well have the boat. <laughs> and then Jon Stewart, the other role in the TV series, there are two... Uh, actors competing for this role. It's it, News say it's down to Aaron Pierre, who is in the new Netflix film Rebel Ridge, and Stephen James from Beacon 23. These are the two actors who are up for it. I bet Aaron Pierre gets it. Yeah, I think, I mean, everyone's blowing up. He's blowing up right now, so he, he seems to be the front runner. But yeah. we'll see, we'll see. Stay in the DC world. Bane and Deathstroke are getting a movie together. So Captain America Brave New World writer Matthew Orton has been tapped to write a Bane and Deathstroke movie for DC Studios, according to an insider with knowledge on the project. For me, with the comic book genre, I think it's more fun as a, just an audience member to see spinoffs that aren't related to anything. Like, if this is just like a Bane and Deathstroke movie where it has nothing to do with anything else, I would really like that. And I think that with Marvel and DC, they should really start doing more projects that have nothing to do with any other projects. And just just like the Batman and just like this, even Marvel, if they'd start doing character projects that weren't related to anything and that's their own thing, that seems like a lot more fun to me than everything being connected. I wonder if it'll be a buddy cop movie or <laughs> villain co- buddy villain movie or okay. anti-hero movie uh-huh. or maybe Bane's a villain, Deathstroke has to stop him or vice versa. Mm-hmm. I wonder what direction it's going to go in because I have no idea. But they're both obviously villains in the rogue gallery of Batman. And both really interesting. Bane's a character that I, I, I always love to see on screen. And I'm looking forward to seeing a new interpretation of him. And Deathstroke is a character that, you know, I don't think we've gotten that character d- done justice in cinema at all. And I think there's so much potential for Deathstroke in movies. You mean the post credit scene on a yacht wasn't <laughs> enough for you? That, was, that wasn't <laughs> enough for you? <laughs> <laughs> you, nah, were, man. you didn't have your your fill of Deathstroke with that? <laughs> I wanted that Batman Deathstroke movie, man. <laughs> uh, but I think it's interesting, and it signed me up. I mean, if if 
if they do a good job, I think this could be a lot of fun and could pave the way for more isolated stories. Another isolated DC Studios movie, maybe for the first one at least, will be Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. It has cast Matthias Schoenartz in the villain role, who we were just talking about a few weeks ago on the show. He's the best. A great Belgian actor, uh, and he's just made such a, a leap into international movies, especially in Hollywood. He's really talented. He's going to play the plum villain role in Supergirl, Woman of Tomorrow. Which plum villain. That's oh, a, oh, like a, it's a, a juicy role. Juicy, yeah. It's a weird way to describe it. <laughs> I thought the plum villain was a villain. Which Craig Gillespie is directing for DC Studios. House of the Dragon star Millie Alcock is top-line superhero feature as Kara Zor-El, the cousin of Superman. I think this is an amazing pick for a villain. Uh, Shun Arts is a fantastic actor. He has He's got the stuff. He hasn't quite broken out in terms of like household status in America. But he's had roles in really big movies, and he is a phenomenal talent. So I think this is an excellent pick for DC. If you don't know him by name, I'm sure you recognize him yeah. by face. He's in Red Sparrow. He's in a bunch of movies. In Rust and Bone was his big hit, and brought in um, Bullhead. A ton of great movies, and a phenomenal actor. He's in Black Mass. He can do any accent, too. And he's in The Drop with Tom Hardy. Who's he in Black Mass? He plays um, not the lawyer. Hold on. One sec, I might be wrong. Black Mass, Matthias. Uh, I might be wrong about. I think you're. Yeah, I watched that recently. I don't think he's in it. Hmm. Let me double check. Oh no, I think I think I'm thinking of someone else. Yeah, I think you're. No, he's not in Black Mass. I think you are mistaken, Anthony. But he's in the Old Guard uh, franchise as well. Now everything you say is suspect. He was right. I was right about everything else he was in. <laughs> I was right about everything else. He was. He was. Everybody. He turned the, down the role of Batman in Batman vs Superman. So he, so he was. He's, oh wow! He said he said it in an interview in on Dutch on the Dutch TV show Twenty Four Ermet. I'm sure I said that wrong. Uh, that he was approached and asked for to play Batman in Batman vs Superman, but he said he was too young to play a mid forties Batman since he was thirty five at the time. Wow, he was a, he was a choice to play Batman instead of Ben Affleck. That's yeah. pretty interesting. He would have been good. Yeah, he would have killed it. Yeah. He looks great as uh, Bruce Wayne. Cool. All right. Moving on. We still have so much to talk about, guys. Catherine Bigelow. Oh, yeah. She has a new film coming out, and the cast revealed is insane. We got Idris Elba, Greta Lee, Tracy Letts, who is in, you've seen in Greta Gerwig's films, Jared Harris, Gabrielle Basso, Basso, Moses Ingram, Anthony Ramos, Jonah Howard King, and Rebecca Ferguson. And this film follows how the White House reacts in real time to missiles headed for America. Great concept. I'm down. I believe, I mean, if I was going to look at this cast, either Idris or Tracy would be playing the president, maybe? If the president's in the film? Yeah. It's got to, I mean, it's about the White House. Jared Harris could be president, Jared too. Jared Harris, yeah. Yeah, whoever's, anyone who's older. Anyone who's old? <laughs> yeah. I was, yeah old, who's the oldest in this cast? Older. Really. <laughs> <laughs> the oldest in this cast would play the president because our presidents are always just old. <laughs> <laughs> we never have, like, a young, hot president anymore. <laughs> we need a 35-year-old president. I mean, it's possible. Yeah, it is possible. Is it 35 or is it 38? 35. Is it 35? You need to be 35 and have been born in this country. Next year, man, I'm running. Uh, you'll get three votes. No, I'll get more than three. The, okay, the boys will vote. The boy <laughs> <laughs> Some more news. Jurassic World Rebirth. Rebirth. Gareth Edwards' film has wrapped production, wrapped filming, starring Scarlett Johansson, Jonathan Bailey, Rupert Friend, and Mahershala Ali. This is theaters <laughs> free. Sorry. Remember two weeks ago you said they brought, they just started production. <laughs> <laughs> BTS photos. Yeah, they I, they just started production. And Mahershala Ali. <laughs> wow, that was a fast shoot. Hitting theaters. That was really fast. July 2nd, 2025. That's man. not that long away. Man, man, that was a fast Anyways, shoot. Anyways, 10 months Holy away. Shit. 10 months away. <laughs> two weeks. 10 days of shooting. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh my God, I'm sorry. Right. I had to say it. You got it. <laughs> It was a funny episode. It was a funny bit. <laughs> Those BTS photos, you know, you can tell. <laughs> Good thing you were keeping behind the scenes on on, on lock, man. <laughs> Watching all those BTS photos. There's a couple of comments about BTS photos <laughs> recently based off that inside joke. It was pretty funny. All right, next up, Apple TV actually sent us an early screener of Alfonso Cuaron's new miniseries, Disclaimer. Um, and this is not an ad, uh, but we got, I got, I, I watched it. It's fantastic. And it's wonderful. It's one of the more interesting TV shows I've seen in a long time. The filmmaking is absolutely insane. It's perfect. It's superb. Uh, Kate Blanchett, Kevin Klein, 
are, are the leads of this show. Sasha Baron Cohen's great in it. Uh, the acting is just top notch. I think this is a, a really fantastic and engrossing mystery. Uh, disclaimer comes out October 11th. Um, and we got the first four episodes in the screener. And when it ended, I was like, I need to see what happens next. So, I mean, if you want to watch a really cool engrossing mystery thriller, uh, check out Disclaimer when it comes out October 11th. My, I gave it four and a half stars on Letterboxd. Next bit of news. John Watts' film Wolves, starring George Clooney and Brad Pitt, has landed on Apple TV+. Plus. This was originally going to be a theatrical release, but that was shut down and went straight to streaming just now. And it's getting just very mixed reviews. This is probably going to be a movie that everyone forgets about or doesn't see. It only has 5,000 ratings on IMDb. Five? Wow. 5,000 ratings on Apple. How much uh, did they spend on it? Probably $100 million. I mean, those guys pulled 20 each, a movie. Same thing with, um, speaking of disclaimer, I'm not sure it'll be a hit. And that's this is a reason why Apple's changed. They remember a couple months ago they announced that they're going to spend less on projects. Because they're giving people $100 million, $200 million. Yeah, it's cool to give filmmakers that much money, but like... Fees- $200 million budget. Exactly. Like, economically $200 feasible. $200 million? Wait, for Wolves? For Wolves? No. That's what I'm looking at right now. On what website? Um, this Actually, so this one says $120 million. Oh my gosh. That's a lot of money. Yeah, Collider. Budget of $200 million. What? Dude, they probably, you know what it is? They probably are pulling at least 30, 30 at, at to least, 50 yeah. million. I mean, Matt and Ben got 20 each for Amazon um, Prime. From Amazon for, for the, what was it called? Uh, Air. Air. That's just their, their like fee to be in the movie. Okay, okay, production. I got it right here. Um, New York Times reported that Apple paid Clooney and Pitt more than $35 million each to star. 50 million each, I bet. And John Watts, 15 million to direct. So you're spending over $100 million just for three people on a movie. That's fucking insane. And, all, and here's the thing. It's a, they have so much money. This is an example of like, I'm not sure. And this is why they're changing their output and what they're producing after, after that announcement a couple months ago and changing how much they're funding for the movies. It's, they, have, they have an embarrassment of riches and in a way they're throwing it at people. That's not really... I mean, what you're going to spend 150 million dollars on Wolf's just because it has Clooney and Pitt in it? I mean, are people going to watch it? Exactly. I mean, clearly 5, they're 000, not. Five thousand, five thousand IMDb, IMDb ratings. ratings, and this is an older audience movie who of people who use IMDb. I mean, I would have seen this movie in theaters, but obviously, I'm, gl- I'm glad it didn't get released in theaters because it's probably not a strong film. It would have made 10 mil probably opening weekend. It's weird that that money got that much of a budget. That's insane. Holy shit. That's what the, the thing with the tech companies making movies. Of course, they make great movies, and, you know, they produce Kills of Flower Moon. Yeah. But then they have such an embarrassment of riches, like you said, that they don't have to worry about box office. Like, all right, whatever. I'll just make a $200 million movie starring two huge stars, diluting, you know, quality of film in general in a lot of ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a, that's a lot of money for that movie. I, was, I thought that movie had... At, most of like a seventy to ninety million dollar budget. That's bonkers. Two, yeah. You spent two hundred million dollars for five thousand Apple ratings. It also is is I it mean, is a, this, IMDb ratings? Is this a case of like the people at Apple like oh let's hang out with George Clooney and Brad Pitt for six months? I think it's a catalog thing yeah. as well. I think they just, they just want people. It, it, I don't know. It's That's just a so lot weird. of money when you have so much money. You yeah. make what five billion dollars a day or whatever whatever they make a quarter. It's just it is what it is. That's the yeah. that's the one thing I think is a problem with tech companies making movies is they don't care about box office, and so they're just tossing money at anything. Of course, they make great movies. Air is a great example. Kills of the Flower Moon, great example of great movies produced by tech companies, but it's changing the system the way movies are made. That's a lot of money. That's a lot. I of guarantee money. they Damn. made fifty each. Woo! Now I know why they said yes to that. <laughs> Holy shit! But it's a movie that no one, no one's watching. No, no one's, one's watching. See. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's not. It's. I mean, it's an undeniable failure. If you're getting Rotten Tomatoes, the the audience scores fifty four percent with just two hundred fifty plus ratings. Two hundred fifty ratings. That's it. Yeah, it says two hundred fifty plus. So it's under a thousand ratings on Rotten Tomatoes. Hold on, let me look at Google. How many people have seen it on Google? You, the like a Google rating, two hundred twenty ratings on Google. No one's watching this movie. Wow. That's Holy absolutely shit. insane. 
Wow. I mean, the trailer on YouTube only has 1.5 million views, and that's a $200 million. You have 1.5 million views on oh, your main Oh, they didn't even break 2 million on views on your main that. trailer. And you know they put money in advertising wow. into the trailer. So they, they juiced up the numbers probably with YouTube. Oh, my God. They spent a lot of money on this. What an insane waste of money. Absolutely insane. Wow. Damn. Damn, damn. <laughs> That's all I can Holy say. Fuck. That's all I can say. Jesus Christ. Holy shit. Well, let's talk about well, some... Well, at least the boys got paid. I mean, <laughs> fucking 5,000 ratings I on mean, IMDb. Can you imagine what insurance is on a match on Lake Cuomo? Oh, man. He just got... He's good. He's good to go. <laughs> That's a lot of fucking hell. <laughs> Moving on to a really cool teaser trailer, Nosferatu. We got a teaser just released yesterday. It's a 30-second one, and it's just one shot. It's a really cool pushing and tracking hovering shot over this ornate elaborate stone coffin. Oh, there's a bit of it in the tr in the original trailer. Yeah. I know what you mean. Leading not, yeah. leading into some star symbol symbology on engraved on the coffin and the new trailer for this movie drops tomorrow on Monday Ooh. and the teaser is just very eerie, really cool and if it's a precursor to what the entire film's going to look like, I'm fucking so excited. Let's go, man. I can't wait. Let's go. New trailer tomorrow. I can't wait. All right, next up some disappointing news for Martin Scorsese fans. His two projects in development have actually been postponed indefinitely. Both his Frank Sinatra biopic and his Life of Jesus project have been halted. And there's no word on when they will begin production again or when these movies will be released. So at the moment, nobody knows why um, Scorsese's paused his productions. I thought that the Jesus one would happen because I know Andrew Garfield has been cast and yeah. you know, he's probably been preparing for it. And then Frank Sinatra one was going to start Leonardo. So I wonder if some studios are hesitant now about doing biopics because they're just so, there's so many, maybe. No, I don't think so. I, I guess hot. not. Yeah, they are still hot. This could be something um, to do with, I don't know, maybe Scorsese had an health, health crisis or something. He's old. That could be a possibility, unfortunately. I guess. I don't know. He's keeping still, it, keeping it on the secret. Seems like he's still. I mean, he's, him and his daughter are always posting on TikTok. Yeah, they're yeah. always like still. There's. He seems like he's still kicking fine. And I mean, this could. I mean, could be I bet the money fell through. Funding issues. Yeah, it's probably money fell through. Yeah, could be. I think a lot of Hollywood studios don't want to do Jesus movies or religious movies outside of the main studio system. And then Sinatra. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? I think it's probably funding fell through. I hope it's just that. Me too. And not, nothing to do with him. I'm sure Marty's fine. I hope so. I'm sure he's fine. I was so worried when I read the story. <laughs> I mean, he's been trying. He's probably had 100 movies he's tried to develop that got shut true. down. You know true, what I mean? True, true, true. Working for 60 years. Next up, we have a new horror remake is in development. Micah Monroe will star in the remake of The Hand That Rocks the Cradle for 20th Century Studios, a.k.a. Disney. The thriller follows a widow who loses her own baby and decides to become a nanny with the ultimate goal of taking the kids and a husband for herself. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I've never seen this. Micah is a baddie. I like that. <laughs> this looks, the photos look great. The stills. She's like intimidating everyone. <laughs> Very cool. I've never even heard of this. The hand that rocks the cradle. Sounds like fun. News about the upcoming Bruce Springsteen biopic, The Boss. Uh, Stephen Graham has been cast as Bruce Springsteen's father, Douglas Springsteen. And then Jeremy Allen White will be playing the, the boss in Deliver Me From Nowhere. Heck yeah. Looks like it's going to be a great, great film. We got another trailer from uh, Kate Blanchett and Charles Dance star in this uh Kind of like an art house comedy zombie movie. <laughs> what? It's, it's pretty funny. So they they and other actors play G seven summit leaders. So a bunch of politicians and world leaders who fly in jets to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> gather for a G seven summit. Um, however, zombies uh, attack the uh, area. And it's actually <laughs> it's pretty funny. It's called Rumors, and it looks like a lot of fun. It looks like very tongue in cheek. Does it have the death of Stalin kind of tone? Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Absolutely. As well as just like horror and some bizarre body horror and um, Alyssa Vikander also. But it looks like a lot of fun. I was not expecting this. This is uh, coming from uh, Ari Aster as a producer on the film. And it, it looks like a really good time. It's called Rumors. Check it out. Cape uh, Lanchette has this great uh, German accent. I, I, I really like the trailer. It's cute. Very cool. Robocop. A RoboCop TV series is in the works at Prime Video, everybody. The show we all needed. Yes, Peter Ocko, who did Black Sales in the Office, will, sur will serve as a showrunner. 
And James Wan is set to executive produce another RoboCop. Another, another one. Just watch the Paul for even one. <laughs> uh, there's some Morbius conversation happening. Jared Harris was recently asked why he took on the role in Morbius. And he said, I've got a mortgage to pay. Hey, I do the same thing, man. Got to pay the bills. Yeah, man. Got to gotta do what you got to do, man. He's a great actor, but he doesn't get a lot of big budget work, you know? Yeah, I mean, since the uh, his last huge budget one was Sherlock. Mm -hmm. Game of Shadows as um, Moriarty. He's great as Moriarty. Yeah, that was an awesome performance. But man, I'd do the same fucking thing. Yeah, do the same thing. Yeah, I get to work for three weeks and I get paid a million dollars? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Uh, we got some news about Lee Wano's Wolfman. They unveiled a new image of the film and looks good. Someone's on the floor screaming. And then <laughs> <laughs> uh, the studio described the film as straight up pure horror. I hope so. Yeah. I'm very excited. Does this come out this year? Comes out next spring. Copy. Copy, copy. News on Mike Flanagan. I think Flan next spring. Yep, sounds about right. Yeah. News on Mike Flanagan's next film, The Life of Chuck, is in talks to be acquired by Neon and set for a 2025 release. The film follows the breakdown of society and disintegration of reality through the lens of one accountant played by Tom Hilston. We have a live update. They successfully purchased the film. Oh, we're, we're getting we're getting readout right now? And we'll release in 2025 in summer. Copy that. I've never heard of the story. The movie? The story. Yeah? It's a Stephen King novel. Oh, is it really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. interesting. I've seen some behind-the-scenes photos lately uh -huh. of Tom Hiddleston like, running around. Yeah, yeah. it's a King uh, adaptation. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. Uh, Jeff Bridges was chatting about Tron Legacy, and he said he wasn't fond of his CGI appearance in Tron Legacy. He said, I looked more like Bill Maher. <laughs> he does look yeah. like Bill Maher in it. Bill Maher, sorry. Um, I remember we saw it at the New Bev, and when it revealed his CGI face, the whole audience was like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> you could hear a collective <laughs> didn't uh, age awkward super sigh. Well. And on a big screen, it did not look good. <laughs> yeah, it didn't age very well at all. <laughs> all right, Especially a when he's... The first time we see the young yeah. version of him when he's talking to his son on the that, that on his was bed. It. Yeah. That one looked not great. Yeah. It looked like a video game. In 2010, it slapped, but whew. <laughs> Huge casting announcement. Uh, Margot Robbie and Jacob Elordi have been cast to star in the New Wuthering Heights adaptation from director Emerald Fennold. However, this is weird casting in my opinion because Jacob Elordi's character is a person of color in the novel. Oh, is he? Yeah. Mm. Is that controversial right now? I sub I would expect it is. That doesn't happen very often. <laughs> Usually, <laughs> not it's anymore. the other way around. Not anymore. Um, but yeah, you never. That doesn't really happen. Well, it happened. Right it's all, it happened a lot. Well, I mean, for a yeah, yeah. hundred years, it happened. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, like any more, like the last 15, 20 years. Yeah, it's it's I would. Hmm. And I, I mean, I can't. Rem I'm trying to remember. I haven't seen it for a while. The other adaptations. I'm pretty positive this racial discrimination plays a part in his character. Mm -hmm. I've never read it or seen any of the adaptations. What a shame. So I don't know. But yeah, I think it's odd casting. I think it's really odd casting. I'm, I was surprised by it. Well, it seems like Jacob's probably Emerald's, Emerald's muse right now. I mean, if you're going to pick an actor, you pick the most in-demand actor. He's up there. Yeah, he's up, especially for young people. But, I mean, obviously, he was just yeah. in her last film, so yeah. maybe she found her muse. Yeah. It's possible. Yeah. It's possible. Let's talk about Chucky. <laughs> it's been canceled <laughs> after three seasons by Sci-Fi and USA Network. I've never seen the show, <laughs> honestly. Neither have I. Um, Nor have I. But I've always respected Sci-Fi, the network, because growing up, they always made ridiculous, crazy, cool movies and it was always species. a trip to watch. Yeah, but did they make Species or did they just show Oh, was that a theatrical movie? I'm pretty sure species? it was. Yeah, they, I think they just always played it. Yeah, they played it on their channel. Yeah. But um, I always liked Sci-Fi Channel when I was a kid. They always had interesting stuff going on. But Chucky's been canceled. Never saw it. I, I've heard very mixed things about it. Yeah, I never had an interest in watching it. Yeah. I think it's just too much of the... It, just the movies, the movies for Chucky or, or a horror icon are the best. Like, I don't want a Scream TV show. I don't want a Jason TV show. I don't want a Mike Myers TV show. Yeah, I don't think we need... It, 30 hours of Chucky. Exactly. It takes it's away from the yeah. the character. And the Absolutely. Film, you know, it takes away from the, the terror. Absolutely. All right. We got some interesting news about Happy Gilmore 2. You jackass. 
<laughs> forgot about that. Jackass, you'll never get off this beach. Just like you'll never get into the NHL, you jackass. <laughs> John Daly, professional golfer, what? revealed that he filmed a role in the Netflix sequel. I hope he's ripping cigarettes, dude. He better, I really hope he, he is. He better be like partying. I ripping guarantee. cigarettes, drinking yeah. beers on the greens. I guarantee he is. Yeah, I can't wait. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, wicked news. The first I heard about your tweet. The part one. <laughs> I heard about your tweet from my girlfriend. <laughs> Did she not like it? No. So uh, it was reported that Wicked's going to have a runtime of two hours and 40 minutes. And this is just part one of the, the films. <laughs> And I did the Ryan Reynolds from... Van Wilder? No, it's from Harold and Kumar go to White Castle oh, yeah, where he yeah. plays the doctor and goes, but why? <laughs> I retweeted with that gif and a couple of people got upset. But why? Like, Careful with the musical lovers, man. Two hours and 40 minutes. The th- think about it this way. Songs take up time and they slow the story down of musical. I know. I get that. Yeah. So, I mean, you got to make, make time for the songs. But it's a two-parter. Well, they want to make a lot of money. <laughs> it was just a funny tweet. Oh, yeah, People yeah. took it way too seriously. <laughs> you just got to be careful with the musical lovers, man. Hey, I like some musicals too, man. But I know people that love Wicked, Yeah, but th- they're not really interested in this movie. I think that, yeah, I've seen the same thing from fans. A little bit of a mixture, but I don't know anything about Wicked. But I'm not sure if I'll see it. Wicked Witch Origins. Origin. <laughs> <laughs> it is an origin story. <laughs> <laughs> all right next up uh the superman documentary about christopher reeve has been such a huge hit in theaters warner brothers has extended it into a wider release from its overwhelming response wow it's doing very well that's amazing moving on to some interesting news disney is making an awards push for deadpool and wolverine including a supporting actor oscar for hugh jackman he is really terrific in this he's movie. fantastic in it i could i mean I could tap, definitely see him getting nominated for actor because he's very good in the movie. Yeah, he's terrific. It would yeah. be the first ever in a Marvel film nomination for acting. Uh, that Black can't... Panther, Chadwick Boseman, maybe? No, I don't think he got nominated. Oh, because he was nominated for um, the other movie that... Ma Rainey's... No, no, no. That was um, that was the year he died. Uh-huh. Uh, let me do- just double check. Chat, I think Ma Rainey was his first Oscar nom. I could no, he wrong. got nominated for... Um, could be wrong. For 27. 42? 42, sorry. I can't remember what, <laughs> what <the> number. <laughs> I forgot what number Jack Robinson was. <laughs> I think I said the first number that came to my head. I thought you were going to say 27 dresses. <laughs> Chadwick Boseman. I don't believe he was nominated for an Oscar. He could have been. I'm not sure if he was. Not even for the James Brown film? No. Let me check. Nominated for one Oscar. You're right. Yeah, my Rainey's. Yeah. That's his only nomination. Wow. Yeah, I thought he had more than that. He should have been nominated for his James Brown. Get on up, I feel like should have been an Oscar nomination for sure. He was amazing in that movie. He, he should have been nominated based off the trailer. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was his only nomination, that movie. 2021, the year he yeah. passed. Yeah. Wow. It's I like, thought looks he had like I was right about that one. Yeah, you were. Good job, man. Moving on to... <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the, um, superhero movies generally only get nominated usually for... Um, Special effects, things like that, sound design. Of course, Heath Ledger won an Oscar being in a comic book movie. Yeah, and so I'm, did. But I'm saying Marvel. Yeah, Marvel movies for Oscar nominations for I actors. I don't think anyone's been nominated. I think you're was yeah because Downey wasn't for no. Endgame. No, that would have been the one to nominate someone. I think Downey in Endgame. He really, he really took it to a new level. Remember when some fans made a they made a petition? petition? Yeah, <laughs> nominate him for his entire body of work as Tony Scott. Uh, what? Tony Stark. Tony Stark. I wish- nominated him for 10 movies? <laughs> and nominated him for act- lead act? He's, what? He's definitely in more than 10 movies. <laughs> <laughs> what are you guys talking about? <laughs> That's not how it works. It needs to be an individual performance in the year. <laughs> People are silly, man. It is what it he is. He could have, I, I mean, he's not a lead. No, that movie doesn't really have a lead, but he could have gotten a supporting actor nomination for sure. Yeah. I, I would have been fine with that. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, I think if you think about acting... Hugh Jackman gave one of the best performances ever in a Marvel movie. Yeah, he might have gave the best might, performance. Yeah, possibly the best. Yeah. Yeah. And we're not talking about, if we're saying Logan's not in the MCU, you know, which it's not. It's not. It was a Fox it's movie. It's technically canon now. Yeah, but it was a Fox movie. It was a Fox at the yeah. time. Yeah. 20th Century Fox. Peaky Blinders movie news. Fuck yeah. Tim Roth has joined the cast of Netflix's Peaky Blinders film. 
It just um, gets better every week. I know, starring Killian Murphy, Rebe- Rebecca Ferguson, Barry Keoghan. Goodness, this is going to be an awesome film. I cannot cannot wait. I, they just keep naming awesome UK Irish actors, and I love it. I'm all for it, man. I love it. Next up, we got Ben Stiller is returning to sports comedy with a movie about pickleball. <laughs> I hope it's, it's like dodgeball, man. <laughs> it's called The Dink. Uh, he's going to star alongside Jake Johnson, Mary Steenbergen, Ed Harris, Andy Roddick, and... Uh, no, uh, no one else announced, but, I mean, that sounds fun. I wonder if Andy Roddick is going to play himself. I bet he would. Probably. I bet he would. That'd be Unless cool. he's a really good actor. He could be. Maybe. I mean, why not just have him be himself? Yeah. Especially because pickleball is an off-brand tennis. An offspring of tennis. Offspring tennis. It's a tennis spinoff. It's a spinoff. Spinoff. We need more Ben Stiller comedy movies. It's been a while. Yeah, I mean, hope he still has the has that humor chops because he's he was such a great star in the 2000s, man. He was so big. He was perfect for the time of comedy. Yeah. Like, it was just pr- what he was doing matched what people wanted to see in comedy so well with his. He's got. Because his acting in all of his. In many of his comedies are is amazing. His He, like, disappears into his roles and his wide range of characters and costumes and accents. Uh, he's always been a tremendous comedic actor with. It's like. I like to. He's like Jordan Peele and Will Ferrell. Like, they become that role on screen you know what i mean yeah it's not just like a really funny actor just doing their thing they would often early will ferrell movies like they would they would really hone into hone in on a character i think tim robinson has that potential for this generation right now who tim robinson he's the the meme guy yeah okay gotcha. <laughs> the meme guy. i think you should leave he's got a movie with paul rudd coming out yeah, yeah. um i think if he can really tap into theaters and and just be a box office draw i think he because he speaks to the generation right now with comedy really mm-hmm. really well i think that's he, a good point i yeah. think he'd be because the, there's always a general like every decade there's a new comedian that's really yeah. like the guy or the girl it, but it seems like the days are over of an actor where being a crazy character wild outfits insane accent ridiculous behavior you know what i mean mm-hmm. like the will ferrell and ben stiller like they're dressing up in these ridiculous outfits you know what i mean except for As, tyler perry movies yeah, yeah, outside of Tyler Perry. Yeah, but um, you know what I mean, like I dodge, like right. dodgeball. Because Galifianakis kind of was part of that deconstruction where he wasn't in a, this ridiculous outfit kind of guy, but yeah. he was just himself in this crazy weird character. Yeah, I mean, Will Ferrell. You you got Step Brothers, Ricky Bobby, Anchorman, ri- like ridiculous character, almost theatrical. Exactly, and the, co- and the outfits are so vital. You know what I mean? They're very specific outfits, and then. Ben Stiller's movies like Dodgeball, very specific outfit and character, like so heightened. Um, and it's like, and it's what Jordan Peele would do on Key and Peele. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He was always so great with his character. Like he would, everything about Jordan Peele would be different whenever he played a character. Hey, don't sleep on Keegan. Keegan's great too. Keegan is wonderful. They both are. Yeah, I love Keegan. I think it's a good point. I never but that about that like doesn't that. happen in comedy anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, not that many comedies come out anymore anyways it's just dying but maybe maybe we'll have a little resurgence in, in the late 2020s the second half we will see it's crazy to say that we're almost in the mid 2020s next year we'll be well we're basically there but our final bit of news is Shaun of the dead has celebrated its 20th anniversary 20th anniversary of course they had a theatrical release a couple weeks ago but now there's a new 4k uhd steelbook blu-ray fuck yeah Sounds fucking Get sick to me. Get that 4K, man. 4K looks great. All right. Love it. That wraps movie news this week. Again, check out our Todd Phillips interview on YouTube. Posted it last Thursday. Also, uh, Joker, the first Joker, we're doing an episode on Monday. Going to break that down. Joker Folly Do we're going to do next Monday on October 7th. After its release, yeah. Yep. And can't wait to talk about that. We can't wait for you all to see it. And I know there's a lot of mixed feelings about it online because of the have heavy musical elements to the film but i just have to remind everybody you know everyone who's upset about their si- being singing and dancing in joker folly do there is singing and dancing in joker the first I, film i w- watched it last night me too joker and there are eight musical-esque sequences in it it's yeah. a it's a it's structured like a musical yeah there's just only it's mostly dancing but I didn't realize how heavily influenced Joker is by musicals. 
It absolutely is. It's, I'm sure he wanted to do a musical at first, but they were like, uh, maybe not. Yeah. And then it was so successful, he was able to do it for the second one. And when you watch the second one, which you all should, it's really great. It is a natural sort of sequel to the first film. You yeah. know, he just expanded on it. The sort of rea- the fantasy of Arthur's are expanded in Joker Folly Do, and music is a huge part of that because the music's always been there. Yeah. And that's when we talk about our episode tomorrow in Joker, we talk, we're going to talk about how music transports uh, Arthur into his fantasies as well as gives him power and dance. Yeah, there's a lot of dancing in that movie. Yeah, there's a ton. There, are, I made a list of all the times there are eight dancing sequences. I know there's eight dances eight in Joker dance sequences. And everyone's upset because there's dancing in Joker Folly Do. Holy fucking shit, relax. Yeah, it was. I was actually like, oh my god, he totally made it structured like a musical yeah. in the first one. It is. There's just there aren't that many singing numbers, but obviously. there is singing. There is singing. He does sing. I know, and his singing is it's silly. It, it, the in Joker too, it's a it, it is a really organic progression into a little bit more for the second film. Arthur also is watching a musical in Joker. Yes, in the first film, he's watching a musical in the yep. living room. It's it's insane. Title how, cards, how people the title com- cards are musical. I know people complain about these little de- these details about movies, but it's like when you watch. When was the last time you saw the first one? There's it is almost a musical. And on our clip, we have we made a clip on it that's gotten a lot of views and comments and so the vast majority of the comments are so negative about it being a musical and i just i'm looking at these and i'm just like don't you want something different don't you want to be surprised or like see a movie that tries something new or do you just want to keep watching the same movie yeah but also he sings and dances in the first one yeah he dances eight times in that movie eight dances the stair dance is a musical number. It is. He's just not singing. <laughs> it's a musical. No- that is a that is a scene you would see in a musical. And the finale has yeah. he sings in the finale of yeah. Joker. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow in that episode. Stay tuned. It's going to be an absolute banger. I give it five stars. Uh, and honestly, after watching Joker last night, uh, I love the finale. The third act of Joker, I think, is just flawless. But I think that Folly Ado for me might have topped it after watching Joker. I'm telling you, I, I'm telling you, when that movie ended, I was I was so floored. I in f- from start to finish overall, I think it might be a stronger film. I than think yeah, Joker after th- watching Joker last night and then really thinking about it. And me, you, and and Juju, we watched it together at, and we were talking about it after it wrapped to try at Goofy. And we were all we were all just couldn't speak after we saw the movie for like five minutes. We were just sitting there like, wow, I don't know what to fucking say right now. I was like ten out of ten. <laughs> right away, I was like, oh, this is fucking amazing. It's incredible. Yeah. I I, I want to see it again so bad. Um, hopefully we have some time in the next week or so. But I can't wait to do that episode as well. But again, that's what we got coming for you this upcoming week or two, and we'll be in production on our short film in the second week of October. So if we are, we'll still have everything posting as normal. Just not as active. Yeah, we won't be very active on social media. If anyone's trying to reach Sorry out to us. Sorry if we ignore send, you. If people are sending in their letterbox. Get, we'll need a week. We're going to be absolutely slammed <laughs> for six days straight, but it's going to be awesome. Filming October so, yeah. 8th to 12th. We're not ignoring you. We'll just be very overwhelmed. But the episodes busy. will go live. And one thing, we might not do letterbox recap that week, probably. Yeah, We're probably going to be so busy. But episodes will be posted so oh, yeah. as regular scheduled programming will continue we hope you all have a wonderful day and enjoyed our recap of all the news become a patron today at patreon.com slash readers of the lost podcast subscribe on youtube like comment hit those five star ratings on spotify and apple and take care everybody see you next time